Richard, my long lost friend. Well, it's been a while, Avery, hasn't it? It's been a very long time. How are you? I'm good. You, you, you scared me, I have to admit, because I was, I was on Facebook or Twitter a couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. and there's you, you on, the, on the airplane, and you said, well, I'm, I'm off for a trip. And I thought to myself, good. Avery <laughs> deserves, she deserves, she, she works hard, she does a good job, she deserves a nice vacation. Mm -hmm. The next day, you said, here I am in Mosul, Iraq. And I was, what? Mosul, Iraq? But, you know, you've, you've done some great reporting from there, I have to say. And um, I know we're going to talk a bit more about that coming up at 6, aren't we? Well, I kind of figure, you know, if you have a honeymoon in North Korea last year, your first year anniversary should be a war zone. It That's feels right. Like it I should have well. known. I should have known because last year you went to North Korea. Well, yeah. How are you going to top this now? Where's the next uh, trip going to be? You Avery? know what? This was an incredible. This was one of the most. This was the most incredible experience of my life. And and there's been some developments in the news that sort of impact at the time that I had there. That I'm glad that we're going to get a chance to talk to you about a little bit later in the show. Yeah. All right. So listen, I want to talk about this big business deal, which is very bizarre. Two strange companies sort of getting together. Amazon and Whole Foods. What's that about? I tell you, it makes actually a lot of sense. So, you know, Amazon's becoming already this big retail behemoth, big box retailers folding in its wake, Hudson's Bay posting losses, Sears Canada doesn't know how much longer it's going to be able to continue. But the one piece Amazon was missing was groceries. And Whole Foods really fills that hole in Amazon's portfolio. Uh, in many ways, uh, Amazon is, I think, buying the distribution network here, a way to get groceries to the customers after they order them. And you know, if Amazon can figure out how to deliver fresh, organic produce at low prices, then the other grocery chains better watch out. And this is why we saw names like Loblaws down 3.5% on Bay Street today, Metro down almost 3%, and Walmart, the big competitor for Amazon Avery, down 4.6%. This really upends the grocery business. And you know, Amazon already coming out with technology that could do even more to the more changes to the grocery business. Yeah, and this technology could actually uh, effectively lower prices for groceries down the road. So Amazon just announcing what it calls the Dash Wad. Uh, it's a little handheld device that lets you order uh, groceries uh, while you're looking in the fridge. Take a look at this clip Amazon put out. Take a look. Ask all recipes for a shrimp pasta recipe. My recommendation is champagne shrimp and pasta recipe. Main ingredients are shrimp, mushrooms, plum tomatoes, cream and parmesan cheese. Mushrooms. Tomatoes. Bad, bad news for me, Avery, because this also works with booze. There's a clip of a guy ordering uh, wine with it. Lovely. You know, <laughs> yeah, good news. Uh, last fall, too, Amazon sort of showed off its uh, grocery store of the future concept, uh, whereby you don't need to pay. You scan your phone on the way into the store, and you take what you want, and then you just walk out with the produce, and yeah. it automatically bills you for it. So, yes, this is definitely disrupting the grocery business, Avery. And the other component here, technology-wise, could be drones. They could deliver your groceries through the air so watch out big changes coming I we're think. not gonna need humans anymore well that's the other part of the story right I mean we're gonna see jobs disappear yeah. with all this technology all right I don't want to be a killjoy about this new thing that's opening up but all I can think about is horse meat um, do you remember when IKEA yeah, had that big scandal that all yeah. those meatballs had horse meat in it? Having yeah. said that, as the vegetarian, I'm very happy to announce that IKEA is going to be having a, uh, a little shop in downtown Toronto. And they're going to be selling veggie uh, balls. <laughs> out, uh, they are. Really? Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Okay. No horse meat in there. No, no horse meat. People can look past horse meat when it's cheap, right? <laughs> IKEA food is cheap. That's the thing. So, yes, uh, IKEA opening up a pop up store on Queen West, right? At Queen and Spadina. And they're selling their trademark uh, food items. Their, uh, their the Swedish meatballs, their veggie balls, their waffles, and their sandwiches. We had a chance to talk to uh, one of the IKEA executives down there at Queen and Spadina today. <laughs> We want our visitors to really come in and just feel that vibe about it's all about breaking conventions. We know that in general, people are stressed when it comes to meal times. There's a lot that goes into thinking about planning your meals daily. We want people to just relax and enjoy their time here and bring the fun, simplicity and togetherness back to meal time. Of course, IKEA has always used food as a loss leader to get people to come in, and they're doing the same downtown here. The, the store will carry 50 different houseware items. Avery, some of the uh, landlords nearby not too happy about this. They worry that even though this is a temporary store for IKEA, that eventually they could display some of the mom-and-pop businesses downtown. Fair enough. All right, tell me about what's happening on Bay Street stocks. They're going uh, lowest level of the year. 
Yeah, not good. Uh, no one, we may be hungry for Swedish meatballs, but not for stocks. The TSX Avery down 1.7% this week, down almost 300 points. It was as the price of oil kind of collapsed again, below 45 bucks. Wall Street, though, going gangbusters. The Dow closed at an all time high tonight. Uh, while Bay Street had a rough week, the loony didn't. The Canadian dollar at a two month high, 75.68 cents US. So that's good news, Avery, for your next trip wherever on earth that may be. <laughs> All right, look, Father's Day coming up. Uh, so grateful that my kids have such an amazing dad, but sort of, well, very sad that I don't have my dad to celebrate. I think a lot of people go through that coming up on, uh, coming up on Father's Day. Yeah, me too, unfortunately, but a lot of great dads out there, and uh, they're hopefully going to get uh, spoiled on Sunday. We have a list here of uh, some things dad may be getting. Uh, average spent on dad this year expected to be 134 bucks, up from last year, and 48% are going to bring dad to dinner or brunch. That's a popular That's a one this one. year. Yeah. Sure is. 25% going to buy dad a sports or a concert ticket. The pop, most popular gift, though, a simple card. 66% going to get dad a card. Uh, Father's Day, not quite as popular as Mother's Day, Avery, but uh, a lot of dads looking forward to some fun this weekend, no doubt. All right, Richard, always a pleasure.